What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 6. We'll be talking about The Exorcist Believer. We'll be talking about Saw X and we'll be talking about The Nun 2. Now, The Nun 2, this will just be my reaction, brief reaction and thoughts before my full review drops tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. As most of you know, I had the unholy pleasure of seeing The Nun 2 last night and outside of the wonderful performances by Tysa, Bonnie, and Storm, as well as the other cast members, this is yet another lackluster dull outing for our titular villain, Valak. The cinematography will get my stamp of approval as does Marco Beltrami's score. He rarely misses with his scores. Uh, however, the three talented writers who have proven themselves in the past, they were simply assigned to clean up a mess that they didn't create and for that i will say they're at least able to improve on the story overall but it's also still held back by the same mistakes that are present in the first none same nonsense same cheap scares same plot points that aren't really all that sensible in a lot of ways and it's kind of overly grand if you will seems like it should be should be more fitting for the marvel cinematic universe if marvel wanted to do horror films I'm just being quite honest. It's not as grounded as where we started with that first Conjuring film anymore. Uh, the characters, yeah, you're not gonna, they're not, you're not gonna care about these characters as much as there are these improvements to the story. You, you still have again just just those same things that were bogging down that first movie. The characters, highly unlikable. You're likely to only care about them if you're someone who wants to revisit this sequel over and over and over again. So by repetition's sake, you're gonna feel some type of attachment to them. But I'll have my few review up tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. Head on over to it and give it a thumbs up before it drops. I'll actually like to see 100 thumbs up before it drops, but it'll be up at the end of this video for you to go over and give it a thumbs up if you want to before it airs. Jumping into Scream 6. Scream 6 could have been centered on a wedding if Kevin Williamson is remembering his Scream 6 correctly anyway. This was during the Happy Horror Time podcast where he was revealing Sydney's role in his Scream 6. Keep in mind... He's also in the past talked about how his Scream 6 would have been more about Gale and Dewey. So I'm assuming this is still a Gale and Dewey driven narrative. But now we're getting some context as to what specifically Sydney would have been doing. So Sydney's story in Scream 6 would have been murder starting up again around the time she's about to get married to her fiance. And she's doubting the man she's chosen because it's like, am I still choosing the bad guys all these years later? But he ultimately would have ended up being good in the end like Derek does and I guess he would get to live like well not like Derek but he would get to live unlike Derek and Sydney gets her happy ending Kevin admits that Sydney had gone through so much so he was determined to give her a happy life after all of this now that sentiment from Kevin Williamson when I heard him say that it was good to hear because I get that this is a horror series and naturally we'll want to see our favorites in some sort of danger. But there is such a thing as an arc and there is such a thing as needing to recognize that there is some fulfillments we need to get to in certain character arcs. Sydney, of course, has had a lot of opportunities to have the door closed on her and ride her out into the sunset. But because there seems to be a discard for arcs, a discard for the fact that certain things do have a shelf life. As long as Scream exists, there's this sentiment, well, then keep on bringing Sydney back. But I say to that, no, the reason you should not keep doing that is because it's going to feel like you want to completely always step on a character arc so that you can get your yayas when you see another Scream movie. There's plenty of great stories you can tell in a franchise that don't constantly rely on old characters. I think that after Scream 7, if she comes back, we don't need to see her again, unless you're doing a reboot trilogy centered around her kids. Uh, but if she doesn't come back for Scream 7, I'm fine with that. There is Again, there's such a thing as an arc, and Sydney deserves to be sent off into the sunset. I think that's something we all could should be able to agree on, that she deserves that. Because it's what the character desires most, a peaceful life without drama. Scream again, like I stated, can continue without her. And that wedding idea, that probably would have been cool on screen, I'm not going to lie. And I do want to shout out Ryan Showers really quick. Uh, there's an episode of his podcast where he goes over his script, and I believe there is a wedding in it. So I think he'll like knowing this. I haven't shared it with him yet, but I will be soon. The Exorcist Believer, jumping into that, The Exorcist Believer dropped a new trailer yesterday and it was a lot better than the first one i'm not gonna lie 
but it still looks like a sequel to one of the most modern Exorcist ripoffs than being a sequel to the original classic. There is a couple of things teased in the trailer that I do want to discuss. One is Reagan's fate. I know a lot of us have been asking, well, is Reagan in it? Is Reagan in it? There's been reports that Reagan is in it. Nobody's going to, of course, believe it until they see her in it. I know for a fact, and I, I have it on good authority to believe that she will show up still. But in the trailer, we see Chris walking into the bedroom with Catherine. And there is a moment where Catherine says Reagan is in hell or something. So did Reagan die? Keep in mind, to my knowledge, that would be a sudden shift in the narrative because Linda Blair has a cameo where she's very much alive. According to multiple test screening audience people that I have talked to, people who have continuously been seen, not continuously, but people who have been attending these more recent screenings and they're still saying that Reagan appeared. So if they have Reagan dead now, that was a sudden shift in the narrative that I would have never foresaw. I doubt Reagan is dead, especially since the trailer confirms a lot of the plot points I am concerned about. Until I see it executed on my screen, I'll remain concerned about it. Don't worry about little old me. If you're excited about this movie, go out and have fun. Enjoy yourself. Go do the same thing with The Nun too. Don't worry about me. Another thing is Chris is shown in this trailer falling on the ground with no eyes. Her eyes have been gouged. And Victor, you can see, rushes in while she's on the ground kind of catching her or picking her up so it doesn't appear to be an hallucination like what i've seen speculated online in fact don't don't bother thinking it's an hallucination <laughs> keep in mind i've been against her inclusion due to certain things that i've known about the film and this trailer highlights one of those reasons i am against chris's inclusion in this movie i'm not against injuring legacy characters but chris's overall execution in this movie for now until i can see it if it translates better on screen, it does not sit well with me. I'm open to being surprised, but this is our sadly hardesty of the year. It is. It just genuinely is. It's it's not something that is very believable for the character of Chris. Had this been Reagan in this role, I could have probably digested a little bit better. I'm certain, again, there's aspects of it that I'll enjoy. Ellen Burson, I have no doubt, will put on a competent performance. But Chris in this role when you see the story and how there's certain things going on that feel like they're being boggled down so she can be included it feels forced it does feel forced jumping into saw x saw x released a couple new things a poster which reads i love saw which i thought was very clever and this new image of shawnee smith's amanda character now shawnee she looks she looks amazing just a random compliment for her costas has also been teasing his return to fans saw space posted a video on twitter of a fan meeting costas and saying i know you can't say but i hope to see you in saw x and he's just winking back at the fan now the evidence of his return is just piling up we already heard dude's voice in the trailer he's posting saw x related things on social media winking at fans at signings and trusted insiders have already outed him I'm just curious how he'll appear in the movie, but we will find out later this month. What did you guys think about the Saw X poster? And what did you think about that new look at Shawnee Smith? What do you think about these other topics we discussed? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification. And there is a video in the description. I'll have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.